Have you recently purchased a dash cam and are looking to install it yourself without it being a total mess? Hi, my name is Jonathan from Black Box My Car, and today I'm here to show you a three channel installation on this Mini Cooper. So today we will be installing a Blackview DR750X 3 channel dash cam. This is a three camera system with a front camera which will be installed on the front windshield, an interior camera will be placed right next to the front camera, and a rear camera which will go on the back window. And everything else that will be required for the installation will be included alongside the dash cam. This installation can be done without any prior technical knowledge. Now that we have everything out of the box, let's start with the front camera installation. Before installing the front camera, let's take a look at the unit itself. The front camera sits in this mounting unit, which can be removed, but when installing it's always best to keep them together. The camera just comes out like this, and the SD card is placed right here. When mounting the camera itself, you have two primary objectives. The first is to capture a clear view of the road in front of the vehicle, and the second is to try and conceal it behind the rear view mirror as much as possible. When it comes down to the specifics of mounting the camera, you have two options. You can either line up the center of the camera lens with the center of the vehicle, or alternatively, if it's more suitable, you can line up the center of the camera mount with the center of the windshield. Either way, the dash cam view angle is wide enough to capture everything in front of your car. In this case, I'm gonna mount the camera itself in the center of the windshield simply because it makes it a little easier to conceal the wires out of the camera up to the headliner. It's important to clean the front windshield simply to ensure that the camera adheres correctly to the windshield. Most importantly, use something that won't leave any kind of residue behind. So now that the windshield has been cleaned and you have found the desired position for your camera, remove the adhesive tape's cover and once you have adhered it to the windshield, you're simply gonna wanna hold the adhesive against the windshield for about 30 seconds just to let the adhesive set into place. When mounting the interior facing IR camera, the best place to put it is most likely going to be behind the rear view mirror, but just offset enough that the rear view mirror does not obstruct its view of the interior of the vehicle. When mounting the internal facing IR camera, you have a couple of options depending on your usage. You can either mount it with a driver side bias or a passenger side bias. If you are looking to self-monitor in any kind of way, mounting it with a driver side bias is gonna be preferable. If you are doing Uber, then mounting it with a passenger side bias is most likely going to give you better coverage of what's going on inside your vehicle. In this case, I'm gonna place it with a bias towards the passenger side uh, and just high enough and far enough over that it's out of the way of the rear view mirror. And, same as before, you're going to want to hold the camera in place for about 30 seconds to make sure the 3M adhesive sticks to the windshield properly. When mounting the rear camera as a part of this camera system, you're most likely going to want to aim for the center of the rear windshield towards the very top of the windshield just to simply make sure it doesn't obscure your view while you're driving the vehicle. One thing to keep in mind, but that is very vehicle specific, is gonna be where this grommet leads from the body to the actual hatch. This is only important to keep in mind for the convenience of routing the wire. So same as before, it's gonna be really important to clean the windshield simply to clean up any debris that might be on it. So as a part of this Blackview system, we have two different kinds of cables. We have a mini USB cable that'll be going between the front facing camera and the interior facing IR camera. And then we have another coaxial cable that'll be running to the rear and the rear facing camera. Now that I have our front facing main camera connected to our interior facing IR camera, the next step is gonna be tucking in the excess wire into the headliner. As a part of a lot of these systems, you may have more wire than you require. 
Not to worry though, it is easy enough to tuck away. In this case, I'm simply tucking it into the headliner, just by gently pulling down on it, making sure not to pull too hard as to distort or damage the headliner in any way, and then just tucking the wire into the headliner. This is a plastic trim tool that gets included alongside the Blackview camera itself. It has many uses, but the primary one, and the one we're gonna be using it for today, is to simply allow us to more easily guide wires through tight areas where maybe I can't fit my fingers. On this Mini Cooper, the fuse box cover and panel are gonna be located in the passenger side footwell. So what we're gonna be doing to make it a little bit easier for not only running the coaxial cord to the rear camera, but as well to run the power to the camera itself, we're gonna be removing the weather stripping from about this portion of the door sill all the way up along the top and then over to about here. So now that we have the interior facing IR camera connected to our main front facing camera, we're going to be connecting the rear camera via the coaxial cord. So as we come to the back of the vehicle here, we're going to have a fair amount of excess wire while we connect to this rear camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the weather stripping from the rear hatch itself, same as I did on the passenger side door. This is going to give me access to some areas where I might be able to hide away this wire. So on most five door vehicles, you're going to have to move the wire through the headliner, back up, through the grommet and then effectively wire it into this rear camera. So what I'm gonna do is simply take the end of the wire, reach into the headliner, and then once the wire is pulled all the way through, we're gonna slowly work the wire through the grommet and pull it out on the other end. So now I've pulled the wire going to the rear camera through the grommet here to the hatch. Sometimes this can be a little bit difficult to do. So if you're having any issues with it, I would just recommend putting a clothes hanger right through to the side that you're trying to put the wire in, putting some tape around it, and then just pulling it right through. Next, what I'll do now that I have the coaxial cord through the grommet is I'm gonna take the cord, pull it through here where the grommet enters into the hatch, have it come out the top of this trim piece and then into the rear camera. Now that I've pulled the coaxial cord through, I'm simply gonna plug it in to the rear camera. For the most part, these plastic panels do simply pop off if you're in need of removing them. However, it's always a good idea to do some research as to how exactly the ones on your vehicle are supposed to be removed. Same as before, oftentimes you will have a lot more wire than you necessarily need. I'm going to be taping up the wire and tucking it into the headliner. Next, I'll be running the power cable from the primary front camera to the vehicle's fuse box. Now that all the wire routing is complete, I'm simply going to be putting the weather stripping back into place. When going to hardwire, remove your car's fuse box cover and consult the diagram to find two suitable fuses. You're going to want to find one fuse that's going to be on only when the vehicle is on and another fuse that's going to have constant power. This will allow the parking mode to function correctly. For this specific vehicle, these are the two fuses that I have chosen to use one of them being an accessory fuse and one of them being constantly powered. Please do note that every vehicle is going to be different. Even if you have a Mini Cooper as well, depending on the trim level, your fuse configuration may be different. There are multiple ways to attach the wire to the fuse, but for now, I'm simply going to be wrapping it around the leg of the fuse. 
Once you have located and connected both your battery and your accessory connection, you will need to locate and connect your ground wire. You are going to want this to be connected to a good chassis ground, something with bare metal. If your Blackview camera does not have an internal voltage cutoff, you will need to utilize the PowerMagic Pro. It connects exactly the same as if you were to directly hardwire the camera. However, you are going to be using the 12 volt cigarette lighter from the camera, which will feed into this female end, and then this end directly into the fuse box as shown before. Once the PowerMagic Pro has been hardwired into the vehicle, you're simply going to want to configure the module to the specific voltage as to which you would like it to cut off. If you are not looking at utilizing your camera for parking mode, or you simply want an easier installation, you can always just use the 12 volt cigarette option from your Blackview camera. So now that all three cameras have been installed, all three cameras have been connected to each other, and the main camera has been connected to our vehicle's fuse box, the next step is going to be starting the car and ensuring functionality of the system. Thank you guys for watching this installation video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you know anybody else who needs help installing their dash cam, please feel free to share this video with them. If you have any questions, please email us at info at blackboxmycar.com.